I got the ocean. I got Sandy. Yes. I'm Ken. Welcome to Unity. Sandy Grigsby, one of the top personal branding experts in the universe. I'm Ken Rakowski, Super Connector, and we are here every single week to hang out with you in what we call Unity, because we want to unify all of our great ideas together. And uh, I'm so happy you could join us. Sandy, you've been rocking on your um, Cal Funders Jam. Yes. You've learned how to animate. You've learned Final Cut. Well, I've learned how to create a digital painting, so digital mm -hmm. artwork. Mm -hmm. You've learned this. I've learned it. I learned how to use Final Cut Pro. You learned, learned it. I learned how to animate within Final Cut Pro. I actually did learn how to animate as well in another program. I just haven't incorporated the two. It so, so much time. All these things you've learned because you just figured out, eh, I can't outsource it because they can't do what I would want. Well, they could do what I want if I had an endless amount of time to sit around and wait and then to go over their work and then to tell them what they did wrong and have them fix it and just go back and forth. And I didn't have that time. Okay, but don't you feel so empowered like now? Totally empowered because now moving forward, when I do find the right person, I know exactly how to do it. So if they're not doing it right, mm. I can tell them. Okay. Uh, I have learned absolutely nothing since uh, this whole COVID time. No, I have. What I've learned is Zoom. You learned course, how to use Zoom. Beyond that. Really well. <laughs> okay, beyond Zoom, I've learned how to get people to go to Zoom things, right? Get people to incorporate. And I've learned to produce a show, which would generally take me. Do you remember when we did our first Zoom show here, remote show, how many people I had? I, I think I had six people here. Do mm -hmm. you remember? Mm -hmm. I had another person. So we had nine people in total. Now I do it just by myself. It's just me. So I've learned to produce a show that would normally take nine people down to myself and make it so it's completely 100% portal. Yeah, you're amazing. When it I'm pretty good that. at it, right? And booking these things. <laughs> so the reason why we bring this up is when you become your own boss and your own employee, you are the only one you have to rely on. And it's a great feeling. And then you have to teach other people. So I have uh, Sammy who's in this. Sammy books all my guests for my show and she is insanely incredible at this. So I will throw out a name. I, I literally will throw things out that I know like are intangible people. Like, can you please go get, oh, I don't know, Obama. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Obama, and she yeah. like works at it, right? Can sure. you please, I'm gonna throw somebody that's been dead for 200 years to see if she can bring them back. <laughs> Like there'll be a seance. I think she did try though. <laughs> she will get anyone and everyone. And I love that she does it. But as what I've done is I've learned to say, all right, I can do all these things. Now what I'm not good at, that's where you start to find other people outsource, right? That's what you do. So what are you not good at? You know, I've decided after my life experience, mm -hmm. I'm good at pretty much everything you that are. I put my mind to. That's right. So it's not what I'm not good at, it's what I don't want to do. And there are a lot of things I don't want to do. For example, bookkeeping. Ugh. I hate bookkeeping. Right, right. I'm good at it. If I sit down and I focus You're on tedious. it, I can make it so meticulous that it's like the perfect blend of books and numbers. Mm -hmm. But I hate doing it, so I outsource it. You outsource it. You find somebody else, that's really good at it, actually enjoys it. Exactly. And you pay them and they love it. Mm -hmm. They love it so much that they do a better job than you would ever imagine yourself doing it. Exactly. And you give them what would, by the way, let's face it, what you would take to do an hour for them to do it, it would be far more expensive for you to do it. Absolutely. Okay. If you factor in what you're good at and where you can put your resources and time, you could be making much more money or having more value inherently to yourself than if you were spending those hours doing those books. And I think this is where the aha is with most entrepreneurs. And that is they realize I've been doing everything. And the problem is I'm not good at everything or I've been wasting too much time doing everything. I'm not getting done what I'm really good at. And actually, I like that you mentioned that. You know, perfectionism is the slayer of everything, right? Especially since what I'm working on requires it to be kind of perfect so it makes sense right and someone said to me well you're spending too much time on it it doesn't have to be perfect it's actually not being perfect it's being accurate so there's a difference so as I'm going through and I'm designing things I have to pull artwork I have to pull stock video I have to pull music I could obsess for hours on end to make sure I have the perfect song that has the perfect elements that has a perfect up and down that's a waste of time the thing is to just get it done so as I'm going through music or I'm looking for graphics whatever I'm doing I'm like you know what good enough throw it in there. I actually give myself a countdown. So as I'm going through it, I'm like, okay, this is taking too long. Just pick one. And I pick it and do it. So it has nothing to do with perf perfection. It's about getting it done and getting it done accurately. Because it's your standard. Exactly. So let me give an example. Somebody that's been on this before, Shaheen, who we love. Shaheen mm -hmm. does an incredible job. 
He goes, Sandy, this confidence jam, why don't you just kind of do it this way? Use your I iPhone. Did it, I did mine in my car. Yeah, he does. And by the way, he charges $10,000 for his class, which is packed. It's packed. insane packed, right? It's all around how to slay Amazon, like to own Amazon. But he has a certain level of let's get it done. Let's be gritty and let's get it out there. Yeah. Because he knows how to market it like insanely well. Sandy sat back going, all right, I know I'm going to be able to market this real well, but this has, I'm a branding expert. It's got to look insanely great. So you put more time into it than he would. Of course. Because you can't do it gritty. You can't do it like, eh, it's got to be awesome. Now, and, and because of what I'm teaching, it has to be accurate. But there's been trade-offs. Yes. Okay, the trade-offs are <laughs> your other businesses have suffered. Well, no, not, not really at all because it's COVID. So I can't even operate my other business the way that I would normally operate it. Stuff you suffered. Have you been taking care of yourself? Yes. Have you been taking care of yourself? No, yes. you know, no, this is what happens. Is I just haven't been sleeping as much no, as wait, I No, wait, 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 wait. She just kicked me in the foot and I I'm going, yeah, and I'm going, to, you. I'm going to challenge you on this because this is what happens when we're an entrepreneur. Yes. Uh, being an entrepreneur, guys, please listen to this. We, once we go 100% inside something, other things will suffer, but they will. And this is super important to understand because everyone thinks when you're gonna do something, the world's gonna be perfect. It's not, it's a fallacy. Because when we put our mind into something 100%, something else will suffer. You may not eat right. By the way, most entrepreneurs that I sit down with, excuse me, most entrepreneurs that I See, sit down with- you just kicked me. Oh, no, I tell <laughs> them this, if you're gonna be in business hardcore, you're probably gonna gain weight. You're probably gonna, guys, lose some of your hair. You're probably gonna have relationship issues. Mm -hmm. You probably won't have great access to your children. You will not go on the type of trips that you can't wait to go on, and you're not gonna be able to enjoy, enjoy that side of life. Now, with all of that, you wanna be an entrepreneur, and they go, oh my God, that sucks, of course not. Now, let me tell you about the upside. Once you find that success, time is your ally, not your enemy. You get to do almost anything you want to do. And finances are not against you. They're with you. Now, the problem is most of us don't have what's called patience, not like a doctor's patience. We want it now, now, now. And that's a, you know who created that problem? The credit card companies. Yeah. Because they created this idea of instantaneous gratification. I buy it, I got it, but I'm gonna pay for it for the next 20 years. How many of you have a student debt? I had a doctor on the, we were talking to a doctor the other day, were you with me on that, the doctor? So we had a, a doctor who went to Harvard, student debts, they're gonna last 22 years. And then someone else who's a scrappy entrepreneur, they didn't finish college. They're making more than the doctor now with no student debt. Mm -hmm. So the doctor now for the next dec two decades is going to be spending all his time on student debt where this scrappy entrepreneur is making more than the doctor. Who do you think is going to be further 25 years from now? Definitely not the doctor. Right. <laughs> but that scrappy entrepreneur had to give up four years of their life to get to that point. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason I bring this up is I've really admired Sandy through this process because I'm an entrepreneur and I've dealt with other entrepreneurs. What they normally are is this, and she is not this, irritable, grumpy, highly focused so they don't pay attention to anything else. You've been incredible. You're playful, okay, because you've learned from this. You want to do things, but you're very regimented at a time. You don't run away from us. Matter of fact, you work around us all the time, don't you? Has that been difficult? It's gonna lie, sometimes it is. Yeah, because there's distractions. But you're hanging out in those moments. Mm -hmm. So I just want you all to know, you're going to be an entrepreneur. Well, that's because I'm taking care of myself. So well, there's a difference between what most people think of taking your care, care of yourself and, your, and other things. Well, what would you say taking care of yourself is? So I make sure that emotionally and mentally I'm supporting myself in the way that I need to do it. So I might not be on my regular schedule of sleeping a certain amount or getting up at a certain time or having my normal routine because I'm so diligently focused on what I'm doing. But mentally, when it comes to taking care of myself, I absolutely do that. Okay. You don't sleep. You're not eating. You don't eat three great meals anymore. That's actually, good... I actually still do eat properly. I don't eat as much, but a lot of times I'm sitting. So I'm also reducing my calories. Because Fair enough. I'm not active like I used to be because I'm so focused on what I'm doing. 
Okay. Most so entrepreneurs, turn, yeah. most entrepreneurs will not eat right. I gained 50 pounds in my first business. I actually lost like 40. Did you really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. You know what it was? It was Domino's at one o'clock in the morning for me. See, San I take Francisco. care of myself and I still have salmon and vegetables. Mm. Well, now I'm talking about 25 <laughs> years ago. You know, when Even I was an entrepreneur. Years ago. It was horrible as an entrepreneur. Building a business. Just Sandy's a unique individual. Most people never do that, but I want you to be prepared that you will go through a very difficult time. But accept that and have patience to move beyond that. Okay? Please do this. Because if you give up right in the middle, you're going to go, oh, damn it. I wish I would have gone just the extra mile. Jason Alves, is Jason? Jason's not here, is he? Jason Azevedo? Yeah, he's not here. So Jason's a great example. He is 29 years old. He has gone through hell. Actually, a year ago, we were sitting with him, and he was thinking about closing his business. I remember that. Right? Yeah. And Jason does not look 29 years old. Jason looks like he's 40 years old. Jason's business, as of now, has 600 employees and just got a $1.2 billion contract. Mm -hmm. But a year ago, he's going to close. Could you imagine if he didn't continue to believe in the hard work to get to the point he's at? So I just want you to understand getting there and seeing it happen is very, very powerful, but never give up. Never, ever give up. Okay. But you're not doing that. You are a uh, Praxis three. Mm -hmm. You have six more, mm -hmm. right? Six more. It's a lot of work. Okay. And staying balanced throughout that whole time. It's going to be a challenge without a difference. Uh, see everyone. So turn on. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, everyone, turn on your cameras. I'd like to see your cameras on. It'd be great, okay? Hey, if you have a comment or an idea, throw it inside the chat. We're here right now. It'd be great to see all of you. So today we're going to talk about something. Actually, uh, Ava gave a name. Kylingo. What was it? Kylingo. Kylingo. That's. Mm -hmm. I heard Ava use this term the other day. It's because Kyle Cease uses it as his name and his friend Diego's name combined. Oh, Kyle got it. Okay, Diego. I thought it was something out of Wikipedia that had a, a real connection. <laughs> so. In the chat right now, I want you all to tell us who you admire. You know, like for me, it'd be like Richard Branson, right? Richard Branson, and, and I'll tell you why. But in the chat, I want you to say who you admire. Write it down inside the chat. Who do you look up to? Who do you go, oh, that person's incredible. And I, personally, I like it to be someone that is alive. So you can't go say Nelson Mandela. Incredible, right? No, but somebody that's alive right now. Julie Andrews is Julie. Yeah, Julie Andrews is still alive. I <laughs> had to think about that. She's been around a long time. So yeah. put inside the chat, uh, President Obama and Elon Musk. Good call there. So come on, put inside the chat. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm seeing people. There we go. Oprah. Oprah Winfrey. Oprah, I worked for her for a while. And come on, I know you always have a hard time with this one. Oh, don't even ask me. I say Richard Branson. <laughs> I like Richard Branson. There's reason why. Come on, put inside the chat. Come on, guys. Wake up. Let's see this. Sammy just said Eva Longoria. Uh, Richard Branson, Oprah Winfrey. Come on, let's see who you got. Come on. Come on, here we go. Frank Gehry. Ooh, Frank Gehry. You know who that is? Architect. He's the one who did the, the funky Disney hall. You know, that looks like it's like That's folding beautiful. stuff. It's great for pictures. Oh my it. God. Ken and Sandy, come on. Whoever said that, no, come on, come on. Let's put it in there. I want to see it from these chats. Come on. Uh, this is a Jamie Starr, Beyonce and Oprah Winfrey. I don't uh, Jasmine, oh, Jasmine Starr. Starr. She's a photographer. Oh, she's a photographer. There you go. Come on. I admire uh, Lisa Nichols. Who's that? Do you know who that is? No? Okay, come on. Come on, everyone. Put it inside here. All right. Now, the Perfect next lady. thing. <laughs> That's me, Yvette, all who? the time. Who's that? She's percolating. Who's this right here? I don't know who that is. Okay, now, what I want you to do is this. I want you to tell us why you admire them. Why you admire them. So let's go over to, I want to go to, uh, let's see, where is he? Where is he? Mr. Burke, turn on your camera, please. Come on, guys. Camera's on. Come on. Let's see. We want to see you. Richard Burke. Working out. I know you're working out. <laughs> Great. Sure on, Richard. Richard, why, <laughs> who did you admire, Richard? Father Gregory Boyle. Okay. Tell us first why. Uh, he did um, Homeboy Industries. I admire his passion, his commitment, uh, the courage that he has to take on things that 
um, no one else would take on the people whose lives he impacts, which is uh, ex-felons, gang members, and um, his intelligence and passion to speak and be in service. Okay, just remember those, okay? Go back to working out. I'm happy you were working out. Otherwise, it didn't sound good. Okay, I muted you just because. Okay, let's go to uh, Sammy, 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 Sammy. Sammy, who did you admire? I put uh, Eva Longoria. Why Eva Longoria? Because I, me personally, she's Hispanic one, and obviously being Mexican, Italian, Polish, that was like just seeing a person that kind of looks at you has has the same skin color as you one, and I love how she was able to balance being an entrepreneur, mom, and um, you know, actress, producer, EP. So I, it's just more admiring the balance of all three things, and I got something. Eva Longoria, right? And also she's kind of tiny too, right? Super tiny. Right? Like yeah. Sammy, tiny. <laughs> Sammy, she might look six foot 10 inside this right here. She is literally, I think you're this tall, right? It's, it's a, a little bit shorter. A little shorter. Okay. <laughs> Five okay. feet, exactly. Five, Five feet. feet. You and your sister are the little, like, little missiles of magic. That's what you guys are, man. You come <laughs> out there, bam. Oh, I'm serious. I like that. <laughs> She's a little that. bit taller than me. She's like five one, five two. Oh, she wow. is? Oh my gosh. That's who's funny. who's smarter? Um, we ha we <laughs> we're in two different. We have two different. Like she's powerful in one element. I'm in a different one. I like it. Safe way to say that. Yeah, answer. exactly. Okay, so there had to be somebody when you were young you admired. You know, actually, there was, but now that I look back, it wasn't actually my own idea. But I used to admire Diane Sawyer. Diane Sawyer. Because my dad wanted me to be a foreign correspondent, so he really pushed it. So I picked her. I met Diane Sawyer. She was pretty cool, actually. She was pretty cool. Yeah, she's still around. Diane Sawyer. I told you, mine back then was Peter Jennings. You probably yeah, don't I know remember Peter. Peter. Yeah, you do. Okay. Peter Jennings. So I, he mentored me, and I think I told you this. He would smoke every, constantly. It was a chimney. So after the news, I would be able to hang out with him in New York. And being with somebody you admired before you got, so I admired Peter Jennings before I even met him. And then getting to be mentored by him was pretty amazing. So who are the people you admire and what are those qualities? So back to the chat. Sorry, we're giving you homework right now. What's the deal? Why is it so hard for everyone to put inside the chat? Give us three or four unbelievable things on why you admire them. Peter Jennings, for me, was he was inside uh, he was he was a initially a war correspondent war correspondents go to war they're in the middle of the war they see the the bullets fly over head. so they're incredibly courageous uh peter jennings won what's called the peabody which is this incredible award in in, in um, journalism he uh won all these awards so when you go in his office he had wards everywhere but he knew everybody so all these pictures of him with these incredible world leaders and when I would sit there, he had this big, round, big, big phone with the dial. Remember the dial? Mm -hmm. He loved the dial phone. It would always ring and would be like, this world leader, this world leader. It was like, whoa, he was incredibly connected. And then he was insanely insightful. So connected, insightful, and he was always achieving. So he's in the middle of everything. So when I looked at Peter Jennings, those were the things. So Diane Sawyer, just because your dad wanted you to connect, was there reasons why you admired her? I thought she was well-spoken. Mm -hmm. She was beautiful. Mm -hmm. I liked the way that she presented herself on television. She had great ideas. She was curious and interesting. There was a lot. Got all those? Yeah. That's interesting. You said that. Wow. That's so what's, what are other people are saying here? Oh, wow. Okay. We got some big ones here. Can you riff on those? Well, let's see. Uh, as well, he was explaining who he likes, which is Lisa Nichols, I think. Here, let's just bring Swelly on. Swelly, I'm unmuting you. Let's see what you got going. So, Swelly, who do you admire? So, I admire three people um, that I follow. Uh, Lisa Nichols is one, uh, Richard Branson is another, and Ellen Musk. And uh, the reason I admire the three, I'll start with Lisa Nichols. So, she came from nothing. And she became something amazing. So when she talks about her background and where she comes from, her story is a story of resilience. And I don't know who that story, is. Tell us who that is. 
Oh, oh, sorry. So Lisa Nichols is a transformational speaker. She's a, she's a personal development coach and, um, and motivational speaker as well. Um, but I think the thing that got me, I mean, there's a lot of motivational speakers out there and a lot of transformational speakers, but the one thing that resonated with me was her background and how, when she tells her story of where she comes from and the resilience that she had to actually rise above where she came from and, and, and become who she is today. That's the one thing. And also she's such a great storyteller and such a great speaker. And from her, one big thing that I've learned is that the way you talk or rather the way you, you, you tell your story can have a real impact on people and learning how to really tell your story and tell your story well and help people engage and, 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 and be able to touch your story and really feel your story. That's the one thing that's really important, being able to move people, not just in terms of motivating them, but moving them from an emotional perspective. That's the one thing I like about Lisa Nichols. Awesome. And then I love Richard Branson because I find that he seems fearless and adventurous and he seems like the type of guy who will try anything new. Um, and not well, fear the fact that he could fail. And that's one thing I go. really love about him. And Elon Musk is just because he's Elon Musk. It's almost like a verb. <laughs> it's a verb. It's like Google, right? Elon Musk is like, he's it's the first well, person in the world. I mean, and that was not even there years ago. All right. Good job on that. Boy, a lot of people are putting, I love seeing all this work. Now you're using the chat. That's what I want to see. Eric, we have not talked to Eric before. Eric. Pop and yawn. Hi, Eric. Eric, unmute yourself. Hey there. Where are you looking, Eric? In San Rafael, California, Marin County. Ooh, you're getting fires right now, aren't you? You just had one pop up the other day, or like yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're getting some smoke, uh, but we're we're sort of a little distant from most of the wine country stuff. No, but uh, I saw one in San Rafael specifically that popped up yesterday afternoon, it looked like. Um. Yeah, there is something in Marin and West Marin by the beach, but I don't know anything that's right in San Rafael. I'm a former Tiburon, so I used to live up there too. Um, right, but, so um, I was invited here by uh, David Freeman, who's my best friend for 50 years. Um, so uh, anyway, hi, Dave. Uh, so you want me to talk about just what I wrote about Obama and uh, Elon Musk? Yeah, tell us first, is that who you admire, those two people? Yes. Uh, tell us why. Uh, I think they both have a mission and a purpose that they be really believe in and that they persevered despite, uh, you know, lots of um, naysayers and people who didn't believe in, uh, in them um, and, uh, you know, just went for it because they believe that the mission is more important to them, you know, <clears throat> just whether they're successful this month or this year. Um, so, uh, and I think just a lot of integrity and uh, they are, they have and continue to change the world. I like that a lot. Great. When is uh, Mr. Freeman's birthday? When is what? When is his birthday? Whose birthday? David's. Oh, David's birthday, December 11th. Just making sure, just making sure, okay? <laughs> Not too far off now. <laughs> okay, great suggestions on that. Thank you, Eric, I appreciate that. Put him on the spot, okay? Very excited. Oh, man, I better know his birthday. Okay. <laughs> David is a good friend. Let's go over to Elton. Where is Elton? Elton. Hey, guys. How are you doing? <laughs> Hi, Elton. Good evening. Good evening for you. Who, who good you evening. Admire? Good morning to everyone else. Pardon? Who do you admire? Um, Oprah Winfrey, and one what? of the people. I admire. Um, so where she came from essentially was um, nothing back in Mississippi to the person that she is today. But following her journey from where she was basically um, mimicking her life in the early years on someone else, but then found herself and eventually followed her vision and her dream for herself um, to where she is now, the media mogul that she is. Just her perseverance, um, is what you're saying? Her perseverance? Perseverance, yes. Despite, you know, all of the challenges that she also went through as well. But also just, um, she, she impacts lives as well. Um, a great motivational speaker. Um, yeah, so those are some of the few Good elements ones. that I think. Good ones. Okay. All right. Thank you, Elton. Stay warm down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was 30, it was three degrees down in, uh, 
in Joburg yesterday. Okay. Sandy, 10 years from now, 10 years from now, tell me about Sandy Grigsby. If you can just literally blow yourself up in 10 years from now. Like eating lots of no, chips. No, 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 no. <laughs> I like those chips. But like Jabu, I was hanging out with Jabu the other day, who's from South Africa, you know Jabu. I asked him 10 years from now, what would he be? He said he wants to have a museum. He wants, wants to own a wild game park to help animals out. And he wants his artwork to be at the level of being the most pristine artwork in the world. Mm -hmm. So, and, oh, and he wants a school. So he wants all these things in 10 years from now. Yeah, I like his things. I might steal like a Oh, I love his, don't <laughs> say it. So 10 years from now, I want you guys to think about the same thing. I want you to look at yourself 10 years from now mm -hmm. and blow it up. Literally go, 10 years from now, I will be like, for me, I'll have three books. I'll produce two movies. My group called Metal will have 150,000 members around the world. And the name Metal will be there at the level of Ted, if not bigger. That's 10 years from now. That's where I see myself. Sandy? Uh, 10 years from now, I have homes all over the world. I can take my friends on vacation wherever I want, and I pay for the whole entire thing. I like that. I am featured on a whole bunch of magazines, and I have my own show, incredible guests on my show, and I'm changing the lives of millions of people. Wow. 10 years from now. So Sandy, you, and you visualize that, don't you? Yeah. Absolutely. So 10 years from now, I want you to look at yourself and tell me who you are 10 years from now. Okay. And make it big, by the way. I call them BHAGs, big, hairy, audacious goals. Massive. Like, oh my gosh. But something that's practical, not like, oh, I want to be on Mars walking around. <laughs> well, I mean. Yeah, but you're not in control you of that. You could be on the moon. But you're not in control of that. You make a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Well, I don't know. No, I don't think we've done private enterprise to the moon yet. That's where Musk is going. Yeah, on Mars. The moon is too close. Come on. That guy shoots for everything that's way out there. <laughs> okay, so 10 years from now. Uh, Steven, you, your camera's muted and you're muted. You're unmuted now and we want your camera on. Come on, Steven. One of the best vocal coaches on the planet. Come on, Steven. Where are you? He's not there. Okay, we're going to go to the vet then. Yvette. Yvette. Hello, Yvette. Oh, goodness. What's that? Now? Now. These are like interview questions. I have to think about this. I'm not so good at knee jerk. Hey, he puts me on the spot all the time. You see my like panic face. So if I have to do it, you have to do it. Okay. I'm just going to throw this out because your questions on the application were fantastic and it's helping me work through a couple of things. So thank you for that. So, oh, got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Ten years. Um, anyway. So um, uh, 10 years from now, I liked how you said like you're comfortable and so you're traveling and, and, and enjoying like seeing the world, learning about different people. That's definitely in the, in the fun zone for me. Um, I think that I have a, um, uh, a gig, I haven't quite uh, uh, crystallized it yet, where I'm helping younger people hone into their natural abilities. Um, and it came from a place that um, I was telling this to Richard. My father said, you can be anything that you want to be. They weren't so great at helping me home. What were my natural skills? So I would like to be able to do that. And I'm a mentor right now. And so I'm seeing little things in this little eight-year-old. And I'm thinking, there's probably other little kids that, you know, if they knew like a little thing when they were like 10, 15 years old, it might help them. Oh, that's, I, want you, I want you to think big. And now what's happening is this. I remember when I was young, my dad came to me and he goes, I want you to take five away from three. What? Five away from three? What are you talking about? I have five. You want me to take five things away from three? That's impossible, dad. Well, I didn't know what negatives were. But then once I learn negatives, then, oh, I get it now. I can take away five from three. I want you to think bigger than what you are today. Because what you're doing is you're, you're basically saying, oh, so today that I can be this 10 years from now. Think that it's a life change. Everything's different about you. Okay. So okay. now think about yourself 10 years from now going, oh, my God, look what I've done. 
Just blow it up. Think totally different right now. So Sandy just said, homes around the world. She's got a, a, a hit show. She's on the cover of magazines. She blew it up. I have three books, two movies. Blow it up. Think big. Go for it again. Oh, gosh. Can you come back to me? I am. I, I am. Right it's a moment to blow it up, okay? Okay, blow it up. Thank you. Sandy, where do you want to go to? Uh, let's go to Amlea. Right here. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, there's Steven. Whoa, Steven, there's Steven whoa, out of nowhere, whoa, like, whoa. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Yo, on, we'll come right back to you in a moment, Steven. <laughs> okay, I'm Leia. Oh, that okay. sounds fun. All right, not yet, Steven. Calm down, big boy. Where is um, she? I bet. Okay, right. can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so I was still like, kind of percolating ideas in my head, but I was, I was thinking definitely when I have uh, a studio and creative space in Barbados as well as in England. Um, I want to have more than one home in this, also England, New York, LA. <laughs> um, I want to be, you know, having, a, I want my business, I want to have several businesses that employ people and have a great work environment and, you know, great development opportunities for people as well as really making real impact for, for people. Um, and you know be able to create work that i'm really proud of and that inspires people so let me make, make sure in terms of like saying. um photography documentaries stuff like that <laughs> just want to make sure we understand what you're saying you want to have um multiple studios Wait, i can't hear you you can't hear us i can't hear you can you hear hello can you guys hear us thumbs up thumbs down can you hear us they can hear us you can't hear us okay. <laughs> can you hear us can you hear us oh she can't hear us Okay, we're gonna come back to you. Come back. Hmm, I wonder what happened there. Okay, let's do Steven real quick. You think he has a shirt? He, he turned his cam off again. Oh, Steven's getting dressed. Come on, Steven. <laughs> come on, Lion King. Did you see him pop out there? All right. All right. Let's go to Akshay. All right. Okay. Oh, there you are. Steven. You had your opportunity. Come on, Steven. <laughs> All right, Steven, tell us <laughs> 10 years from now, think huge. Come on. Uh, 10 years from now, I'd like to wake up and just know that every person on planet Earth has what they need. That's not you. You can wake up tomorrow. I want to be part like you know of contributing to a plan that 10 years from now makes sure that when I wake up, every person on planet Earth has what they need. Steven, th no, this is work. This is where we have to work with you on this. What was, can you give the oxygen example again, please? You've got to put your own oxygen mask on first. Meaning, if you help everybody else and you don't help yourself and you guys are all on a plane or on a bus or wherever and it catches on fire and it's going down and you need to buckle someone in next to you. So you reach over, you buckle them in and then you fly out of your seat, but you didn't finish buckling them in. You die and they die. Mm -hmm. That kind of sucks. So... You got to put your oxygen, oxygen mask on first. Seatbelt on. Buckle yourself in. You're not going anywhere. Then you can reach over and securely fasten them to make sure that you're both going to stay alive. Well, between now and then, I'm building a vocal platform that could affect every person on planet Earth. I still think and that no. takes care of me. Big, 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 huge, blow it up. Come on. That's pretty big, isn't it? No. <laughs> no, because again, you're thinking like when my dad said, take five away from three. You're thinking like today. Think bigger than today. Think as I want as every person on planet Earth no, to know that, no, that you, you are not in control of that. Yeah. Oh, okay. You are not. This is something you could control. This is really important to me because I think this is one of, and I'm not saying an issue with you, but I think by pleasing everybody out there, you never satisfy yourself. You're always empty. Even though you see everybody else smiling, it's almost as if you're window shopping all the time. Go, look how nice that is, but it's not mine. So, so flip this around. Come on, I want you to think, I don't mean to come down on you, Stephen, but I know you can think big. Come on. Well, um, you, you, you mean something just for me? Yes. You 10 years from now. Uh, my, I'll, I'll have my own channel where I control all of the content 
and all of that content is used to make sure that every person on planet Earth has okay. what they need. Can I throw some ideas and you just tell me if you like it? Uh, sure, go ahead. The, the Stephen Harms uh, School for Voice in 10 cities around the United States. Yeah. You like that? That could also be on the channel. But did you, did you see what I just did? Is that something that you would like to have? Uh, yes, that would be that would be an amazing thing to okay. make sure 40, that you're 49 right now, right? Huh? Are you 49? No, you're 50. You, yeah, you think it's really appropriate to tell everybody how I'm old 50, everybody is I'm, all the time? I'm, 50, I'm 54 because I'm trying to say this when I'm 64. What I will have are three books, two movies, metal will be 150 million people by or 150,000. I'll have six pack, by the way, six pack abs. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, just saying. Uh, He's already started. I want you to know the time. So you just turned 50. So you're 60. You'll have what when you're 60? You're going to turn, look in the future and go, holy moly, look what I've become. When I turn 60, I'll have, I'll be able to manage all of my own time where money won't be an issue. Time won't be an issue. I'll be mentoring people. Uh, People uh, will work for me. I'll be able to delegate responsibilities. Uh, what is so that? And all what is together. that? Huh? But what is that? Are you are you running a hotel and everybody now works for you at a hotel, or do you? Own no, I'm going to run a foundation that focuses on making sure that every person on planet Earth has what they need. That's pretty big, I think. I can't think of anything bigger than that. I, 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 I understand. I understand where you're going, and I know this is a gentleman that f former clergy, you know, you, you were always in service. I want you to think big that it's tangible of something that you've become. And when I said a, a series of schools in different cities, I could definitely see the Stephen Harms School of Sound and Voice in New York and in London and in Singapore. I could see that you've become the top uh, expert when it comes to voice and sound. I could see that you're on stage everywhere teaching people your principles and your ideas. I can see that there's articles and magazines and your guest appearances on TV shows all over the world. I can see that people are taking your online classes and your schools. You've done a master class now. That's when I say think big. I don't, I'm not saying think impossible. So 10 years from now, I think I will be the most sought after person for voice in the entire world there you I, go I, I, yeah right <laughs> and then you can change lives yeah and then you can <laughs> but that that's that little switch that little thing i want you to visualize that stephen i want that to be real real okay not changing everybody's lives because unfortunately you just said everybody else yes. now you have to rely on them because you know there are pygmies in parts of africa <laughs> that don't care about their voice Okay, things are more important than voice. That, 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 well, that's absolutely that, true. That leaf For that sure. they have that's supposed to cover everything up because no leaf, no service. No cholera, all <laughs> kinds of stuff. No. Much more important. No cholera. Just saying. <laughs> all right, Stephen, you got that? Yeah, thanks for calling me out, guys. I appreciate right. your encouragement and reminders of, of my values. I want you to think big. We've got to go back to that. She hates us. She goes, oh, no, they, they remember me. Like, oh, there's All right. other people on this call. <laughs> Come on, Yvette. you got to be unmuted. No, you have to unmute yourself. Sorry about that. Thank you. That was really, really helpful. And even though I percolate things that take longer than this, um, I'm going to say uh, I recognize that with that vision that I just shared with you, I'm only one person. So that's very limited as to how many little kids you could help. Right. So thank you for that. So I'm thinking maybe it's like a, like a, maybe I teach other people how to do that. And maybe there's like a little after school class and then, and this is actually for helping people to little kids to recognize those things, but everybody else learns how to see that in children. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna help your dream a little bit. Please. Please. <laughs> Please. You said there's a little after school class. No. Okay. I know. I you are the that. world leader in after school programs to help kids discover their potential. That's beautiful. There you go. I just want to real okay. quick. My, my father was um, hit by a drunk Thank driver you. in 1982 and he was basically left for dead. He um, 
was put inside something called a, um, a striker bed because his neck was broken every six hours, they would have to rotate him on this bed so he wouldn't get bed sores. Eventually, when he got out of the hospital, they put him in a halo. They drilled two holes here and two holes here and this metal brace around him that went around his body like this. And I was a sophomore in high school. When I was a sophomore in high school, I realized that a drunk driver to hit my dad, probably if they had a different way of getting home, they never would have hit my dad. So I went to all the jocks in school, and this is 1982, 83, and I figured out this thing called a toll-free number, 1-800 in the United States. And I learned that I could point a toll-free number to any phone I wanted to, as long as I called six hours before. So every Friday and Saturday night, we did a non-alcoholic party at different houses, and we had that toll-free number go to that house. And what we would do is anyone in my school district school district could dial 1-800 safe rides and we would pick them up between the hours of 10 and 2. So 10 o'clock at night to 2 in the morning on the weekends. Now I started that in my school district of district 230 in south side of Chicago. Uh, by the time I was a senior that was in about 300 school districts around the United States. I was on Good Morning America with Joan London who I fell in love with back then. Oh my god Joan London. Um, now that's in, now that's in. I want to say something like seventeen thousand schools around the United States. Now, did I ever think safe rides would be big when I was a sophomore, junior in high school? Going, oh my God, it's going to be in seventeen thousand schools around the world. No, but ten years later, I thought in my mind, I want safe rides to be accessible in every school in America, which it is. I I wanted to save thousands of lives, which I did. But I thought big when I was young. And when I got to that age of 10 years later, it became reality. So that think big. That is really cool. Oh, think, big. think big. I'm the world leader at this, huh? Oh, gosh, you anything you want. Think big. Don't use the word. Sandy even said it. you said little. little? Unless it's waste, that's okay. <laughs> but you're right. And he means in how much garbage you put out. <laughs> <laughs> Carbon footprint. Okay. okay. I have um, uh, schools in every country that are, that are after school programs that kids actually really like going to because they're learning about themselves and learning what they're really good at. Okay. And people are teaching them and they're having fun. Hmm. There's your school. Tell me more about a vet 10 years from now. Not just about that. What else? Oh, okay. I have the kick-ass beach house in three different places in the world. Don't ask me where yet. Good. Keep on okay. going. Okay. Um, I travel like every three months to a new place that I've never been to and learn about the people. Um, mm, mm, boy, you really put me here. <laughs> um, I gotta work on this. Um, go to somebody else. Okay, I will think about it. I'm Yvette, not popping out. Yvette, go ahead. Who did you admire earlier? Oh, okay. I had a problem with it, the person not being alive, because I can tell you, I feel it in my heart, Julia Child. Do you want to know why? Yes. I'm thinking about this. Okay. Uh, it's not just based off that movie, Julia and Julia. I read a book about her. She lived in balance. She lived in balance. She honed a craft. She lived with gusto. She didn't hold back. She wasn't worried about dying. She... When I say she lived in balance, do you know that she visited her husband every day in the nursing home, no matter how successful she was? Every day she visited him. You know that. She, um, she was bold. She was a thought leader. She, she was told she couldn't do what she did do. And she was creative. Okay, great. Now, that 10 years from now. Yes. Are you pretty impressive? Gosh, that modesty holds us back. Yes, I am. Yes, I like that. I mean, really impressive, yes, right? Yes. So yes. you need to admire that person. Mm. Julia Childs is great. 
But if that 10 years from now is mind blowing. That's beautiful. That person is who you need to become because you can. Sandy becoming that person that she just said on magazines, multiple homes, her program is used everywhere. She can, matter of fact, she's on her way to become that. That's why she has a hard time to say, who do I admire? Because she admires who she's going to become. Awesome. And, I, and I think when we say Elon Musk, great, but that's intangible. You're not Elon Musk. You're not Oprah. You're not Beyonce. You're you. But we have to look at who we aspire to be because we know us. I am not going to be a tap, the best tap dancer in the world. I'm not aspired to do that. But someone else might want to be the best tap dancer in the world. Yes, very true. So we need to stop looking at around the world to admire what we want to become as opposed to who we are. Be who we should become. But we have to think big. Look at Sammy. Look at his list that Sammy just did. <laughs> you need another Sammy. <laughs> Speak five languages, uh, Chicago Country Club, not sure what that is. Be uh, a number one best-selling author, all these things. I, by the way, I know Sammy can do these, but that's what you need to become. Let's stop looking outside for what we should be and look inside. Now, how do you do that? What do you, what do, you do? How do you do you go after one at a time? What, what's your, like, right now you're working on your program. Mm -hmm. You're putting your heart and soul into it, you, without a doubt. Yep. Your program would never, you would never be who you are without you putting your heart and soul into it right now. It's true. I think you have to go through with intention. So whatever you do, you need to do it with intention. So my intention for the program that I'm working on is to change other people's lives so that they can feel the confidence that I feel in myself. So how do you do what you want to do with intention? So you have to decide what that is. And then every choice you make moving forward is with that outcome in mind. But the list of what you want. You said five or three homes? Three homes, yes. How important is to be less general and be more specific? Well, in my mind, it's three homes. So my intention is to build up the program so I can acquire the three homes. Mm -hmm. So once the program's built up, then I can get as creative as I want. But you can get very creative. I could say I want to, like I know I want a home in Switzerland. Yeah. It's a done deal. Not a I want one with a bunker. Oh, I knew you were gonna see a bunker. It's amazing. There's this YouTube documentary about Bunkers in Switzerland, they all have them. Like, it's awesome. Mm. You want a bunker. Anyway, so that would be one for sure. And then the rest, I have to explore. I still want yeah, to explore the it. world to figure out what But you be. did say Switzerland, so you yeah. see that. That's yeah. a visual right there, okay? Yes. And, and, I think, and Thailand. Oh, so you know now. So now we have a third one. We don't know where it's going to be. One, I don't know yet. I haven't, I haven't discovered that yet. But don't you think being more specific, like saying, I want to be on... Um, I, I, like I said, I want to have three books. Mm -hmm. Very specific. Yeah, very specific. Right? And I think being very specific yes. when you sit back is important. You know, and by the way, we could all say, hey, I want my kids to do this. I want my family to be like that. That's, you're, you're not in control of that. Yeah, that's one thing that we have to remember. We can't control what other people do, choose, think. You can't. So, so you have Steven to know. was saying, the yeah, world. The world, there's, you can't control the world because there's some people, like I said, the pygmies, they might not value their voice as much as you do. They have other things that they value. So we have to stop projecting what we want other people to do because we wrap our confidence and our self-worth into the outcomes of what other people are doing and we can't actually control that. Only thing you can control is yourself, what you think about yourself, what you say about yourself and what you do. And it's interesting where people are saying, oh my God, but I can't, you know, affect uh, like things like COVID and all that. Well, how many people have you talked to saying, this has been the best time ever? Yes. I, I would suggest that COVID has helped you make your program. Oh, if it weren't for COVID, I would still be taking pictures of people so busy with no time to do my own program. Doing the same thing over and over again. You're making software right now, meaning you make it once and many can use it. Yes. Your other business was you over and over again. Yes. Same thing. I'm learning to speak to massive now because I used to get people into a theater every single week and it was not a sustainable business model. I had a sustainable business model because of COVID. So when you say I'm not in control of things, well, I want you to think 10 years out to make it happen. So there's a guy named Nick Ebling. You've met him briefly we, uh, while we're having sushi. He has a company called the Not Impossible Labs not impossible labs. And what he does is he takes on projects that would be perceived as being impossible. 
<laughs> and get this, he doesn't know how to make it possible. So for example, he met somebody who had ALS, who was a graffiti artist, and he lost the ability to use his hands to paint graffiti. So someone says, all right, we need to give him the ability to paint graffiti again. Wait a second, it's impossible. He doesn't have his, his movement of his hands anymore. So they created, again, didn't know they were gonna do this and how they're gonna do this, they created glasses that he would wear and everywhere he looked, he was able to paint graffiti with his eyes through these glasses. So all of a sudden, impossible turned into possible, not impossible. And I think if we really visualize ourselves going to an extreme saying, oh my God, that's impossible, it's not. As long as you're in control of it, you know, where you're saying, you know, I, I want to be able to, um, I want to be able to be a, I want to be a a, a, a a black opera singer that tap dances. I can't do that. <laughs> it's not going to happen. You could get a full body tattoo. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's the tap dancing part's the be problem. be very painful when they get in your eyes. Oh, just saying. they do do that, by the way. <laughs> Let's be realistic. Stephen, I do see you having schools around the world. Okay, I do see you affecting people. I do see you on magazines. I do see you have your own show. Absolutely you have your own show. All that's real. Oh, yeah. But you have to work your freaking ass off to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And this goes back to something I started with. You want to be an entrepreneur and you want these things to happen. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice has to be part of your plan. Yep. Most lottery winners that win all this money over a period of time, they lose everything, including the money that they won because they weren't conditioned to have it. You are conditioned to have your visuals of what you are going to be 10 years from now. You're conditioned to do it, but you have to sacrifice. We can't be like Sandy all the time saying, you know, I have balance. I, 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 I'm not capable of that, but I know. Yeah, you're not. I know I'm not. I know I'm not. It's okay, we're not all. But, but, but I do have you to help me stay in check. Yes, you do. Okay, and that's important. That's what makes you perfect. Okay. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> I do have her to keep me in check, but my biggest problem, and I think it might be many of ours, is we know what it takes to find that success, and we are reluctant at times to say, oh, God, I got to do it. It's kind of like that cold, why do people like cold baths? I don't get it. Well, it's supposed to put the blood flow back to be good, heart, right? away from your extremities and it causes, then when it rushes back, it puts nutrients where it's yeah. yeah. But you think people Skipping. are going, I can't wait. But people oh. love the cold bath after they get out of it. They go, oh my God, that felt great when they get out of it. Yeah. But they know they have to get into it first and that's where the, oh God, and they now get into it. get out of a cold bath into a hot jacuzzi. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's yeah. good for you, is it? That's so good for you. Okay. Blood flow. And then you got to get back in the cold. So it's cold like, oh, showers hot, oh, hot, are oh, the hot. M part of S&M. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, true. true. But we have to go through that initial discomfort to get these visuals to come true. We have to. So something I just learned the other day about you and I felt sad. You don't find going to the gym to be play where I do. Well, I mean, unless I'm on the treadmill with a movie, a really good movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show. So we found, we found a component of it. But I honestly, I didn't know that, babe. I really didn't. Because I know when I was You're all like, upset. Let's go to the gym like six times a day. And I'd be like, Ugh. I didn't, because that's play. To you, it's not play. But what is play to you is probably us going for walks at night. Yes. Right? That's, that's play. Uh, play to you would be going shopping sometimes. Really? Really? Going to, going to, like some no. new stores? Okay, good. No, I'm stop, not a shopper. Play, stop, play I shop out of necessity, not out of joy. I like going to the grocery store. That's play for me. No? That's shopping. I don't like shopping. Really? I love it. There's no form of shopping you like at all. I mean, if it's shopping for like really fancy how about, how about, diamond jewelry, I'm how, okay. You know? Like, how about going to a farmer's market? There. I'm okay going to a farmer's market. So this is an interesting situation, right? So where I see play and where she sees play are, are somewhat different, but we find parity because we're together. Now, if you're alone, you're in charge, but stay in check. Have those friends out there going, you know what, you are unruly, you're grumpy, you're irritable, you are getting fat, you're losing your hair, you look sick, you need some sleep. Yeah, you don't have any friends anymore. Somebody that's checking you off, it could be your siblings or someone else, because you are going to go through some discomfort to get to that visual of what you're gonna be 10 years from now. Yeah. 
There's no Di Diane Sawyer needed in your future. No. It's you. I've got me. There's no Elon Musk or, or Richard Branson for me in the future. No. I got me. You got you. So as we're sitting here admiring all these people, forget about them. And remember what you're going to be 10 years from now because you can see it. Mm -hmm. So Richard, who's working out here today saying, homeboy, that's great, but you built something bigger and better and admire who you are today because you are going to be that person in the future. That's it. That's all I got. Hey, let's talk real quick about Confidence GM. Yes. Uh, I see you every moment thinking about it. All every, the good stuff's coming out of my mind. Everything is based upon what's called praxis. Yes. Praxis is. Explain what a praxis is and why it's so It's unique. the praxis, the exercise. So each module has different praxis in it. Well, the whole thing is made up of praxises. So each praxis is a module in, in essence. And I, oh, real quick, I know Sammy's going through the class. Yes. Hey, Sammy, you want to give us an update? What's it like? What's a uh, confidence gym like? It's not going to lie. Like, it's one of those things where you know when someone put every ounce of, of their energy in it. And I know that when just simply how Ken's talking about and Sandy, it really is one of the best things like right now. Like personally, I feel like I'm confident, but I love how during this program, I'm learning little things about myself, of myself, like disguising time, but really in control. It's just really digging so deep into me where I'm just learning kind of myself again, even though I'm very in tune with myself. So it's just, really, it's, it's really digging deep and also just kind of seeing yourself, uh, seeing progress. I feel like right now, a lot of people want, we live in like, you know, technologies now instead of communities. And I think with Confidence Jam, you're really getting your self growth going on along with seeing that progress and applying it. And I just feel like there's just so much content out right there right now, where again, application is full force with Confidence Jam. It's straight to the point, you're on it, time, boom, here you go. And it's literally, she's holding your hand while doing it, so. And remember, it's not, it's confidence is part of this. It's going to help build your personal brand. Yeah. But Thank you, you Thank you, Sammy. Right, and Sammy said to it, she just did her playlist. So uh -oh, yeah. part, part of this process is to know the things that are around you that help you become better at who you are. And one of it's music. Oh, music is so important. Music sets the tone for your life. So if you're listening to really dark, sad, depressing music, that says something. Yeah. So if you're listening to upbeat, fun music that gets you going, I mean, it doesn't have to be the same music everyone listens to. Like, for example, I love um, Argentinian tango music. There are no words, but there's something about the it's, energy of it uplifting. that gets, it's uplifting and it makes me want to move and dance. It gets me all happy and excited. So it doesn't matter what the music is as, as long as it brings your energy up. There you go. All right. So go check it out. Go to Sandy and Focus for that. And of course, we want to thank Ava for helping us every single week because Sandy and Ava are the ones who are putting that confidence jam together, yes. right? And uh, your ideas and the stories you want to tell, hey, tell us more, right? Make sure you add yourself inside the WhatsApp if you're not there or invite friends. And it's great to see new people in here and we'll see you next week. And guys, have a great week. And remember, admire who you're going to be 10 years from now. Yep. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.